Welcome to our latest soldering video and uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in as always. Now in this one, I've had a few people ask me to show this. Now I've showed this in a few of my longer videos, but I just thought I'd dedicate its own personal video to it. So I'm going to show you how you can remove and replace this 100 pin quad flat pack. It's QFP. Basically, really simple method. I'm just going to use a hot air gun sort of to remove it. I'll show you if you're worried how you can protect some of the parts close by. I'll sort of talk about the temperatures I use and... Uh, then I'll sort of show you how to fit a new part to it afterwards and clean it all up. So what we do, we move on to the first stage, that's the removal of the uh, the IC, and then we work through, like I say, and we fit a new part and clean it all up at the end. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So we'll get on with the first stage now. We move on to the first stage of uh, the changing of this IC. Now basically what you want to do, because I'm using a hot air gun, I've actually put some silver tape, aluminium tape, just over here because there's some components fairly close to the sort of icy joints, the same up here. These ones down here are probably far enough away to not protect them. But that pipe, that's aluminium tape is basically going to protect them components underneath. Some people use captain tape for doing that. But I find the heat can go through captain tape and the components can still shift. So I've, I've got a slight part of them components sticking out there, but there's enough protection there to sort of stop them moving. So yeah, it's just something I do. You sort of get to know when you need to protect things. But yeah, aluminium tape's easy available from sort of RS, Farnell, etc. It's a company called 3M's, the sort of, uh, yeah, the brand that I use. So basically what we do, I've already pre-fluxed around the IC, sort of all around four, all four rows. Basically I've got my hot air station set to about 400 degrees Celsius. Got the air on it about 80. I use a quick 861 DA station. Very good station, but there's lots of different hot air stations out there, all really good. So yeah, just uh, choose the one you like. So anyway, we'll get on with the removal. So you will hear some air noise from this, because uh, yeah, the air on this station is quite loud. But it's, yeah, it's a, it's a really good station. Sort of strongly advise you if you're yeah if you're looking for a decent one. It's not a budget one. Sort of next sort of method, or sort of next uh, step up. But yeah, really good station. So anyway, when you're using a hot air gun. Don't concentrate on one area to start with, just circle the area, put a bit of heat into all the, the whole area. This one will take a fair while because there's a hundred pins, you've got to sort of uh, get desoldered. And just be patient, don't try and lift it off too early. So obviously that uh, can be pretty fatal, just pull a few pads off. So yeah, just be patient and you will eventually get this off or fine we'll just keep circling the area putting some heat into all four sides this hot air gun comes with a few different nozzles so sort of choose the one that's appropriate for the component to be removed like I say just be patient you know, soon sort of put your tweezers in place and uh, Hopefully the point should lift off. Well, I'm just going to put my tweezers on the corners. Just keep circling all four sides. You, do, you will start seeing the joints sort of, uh, start melting soon. It's quite a large body die so that will take a short while. There you go, we've got it. So you've lifted that off. As you can see, all the pads are all perfectly still there. So all you've got to do now, we get some solder braid, we get them cleaned off, and then uh, clean the, I like to sort of clean the area totally up. 
Some people might drop the new IC on to start with um, using sort of some of the solder that's on there, but I like to clean the whole area up, basically start afresh. So basically I'll get this all sort of braided off and uh, then we'll sort of get on with the fitting of the new one. That's all I've done so far. I've just quickly cleaned some of the burnt flux off that was underneath the IC body. And yeah, basically all the components around the outside are fine. I'll spin this around in a minute so you can see them all. So what I'm going to do now is basically solder braid some of this solder off. Now a lot of people would leave this on, but I like to take it back to the start, get sort of flat pads. And when you put the new IC on it, sits dead flush. Then you can basically start soldering it from, from scratch. So this is what I like to do, basically take it all off, start from scratch and you get a lovely flat IC. So what I'll always do, add some external flux again to these joints. Just run a quick bead of flux up the, the row you're concentrating on. Now a great tip here is dip your solder braid into some flux. It's basically going to aid the solder going up the braid and uh, just makes braid so much better. It's a great tip, one of the best that I've sort of learnt. Yeah, always add some basic sort of flux to your uh, braid and uh, your braid becomes great. So yeah, basically I've tinned my iron with a slight bit of solder. So just basically put it on the joint at the end. Just run it along the row. Run it slowly. Just taking all that solder off the whole row. So you're going to get a lovely flat row of sort of pads there. So yes, yeah, it's, it's just something I like to do, get the solder all the way down so you can basically get a lovely flat IC. So what we do, just turn it around, just do one more row. Just concentrate on this row up here. Just get the focus slightly better. Right, so we do, again, external flux right along the row. Always trim off your braid that's preloaded with solder. So, so once your braid sort of... Uh, Got sort of solder load into it, won't take any more. So you always trim the end of the braid and start with a new bit. So again, just tin my iron with a small amount of solder. Put it onto the end pad and uh, away we go. You can see the sort of solder going up the braid. So there you go, you've got another lovely flat row of joints. As you can see, all them components I protected earlier, still fine. There's no movement in any of them. So yeah, basically what I do, I'll clean these other two rows off, and then uh, we concentrate on fitting a new IC. Right, so move on to the soldering stage. Now what I've done, I've sort of pre-lined the component up onto its pads. I've double checked the polarity. So that's one thing, before you take the old one off, make sure you've got the polarity sort of logged down somewhere. Now I've already pre-fluxed this side of the joints here. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna tack one of them pads in place. I've tacked one back on the, sort of around the other side. So as long as you've got two or three sides tacked on in sort of one or two places, that's gonna hold your IC in position. Basically, I'll just sort of any pad along this side, just say, sort of go down there, just tack that one on. So basically, now you're ready to just do the whole sort of row. I've already pre fluxed this side. The flux I use has actually become discontinued. So, uh, I used to talk about the flux uh, quite a lot, but obviously, there's no point now. This is uh, I'm still looking for a new one. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is just go down the whole side one at a time, how I do it, one joint at a time. So basically, I preloaded my iron to do the first joint, and then we're sort of move down the row, it's basically, just feed it in one at a time. I've got 0 0.25 solder, it's lead, leaded solder. So I've got my iron set to about 340 degrees. I'm just going down one at a time, you can feed it in. So try and get some of this 0 0.25 solder. It's the best thing for when you've got fine pitch ICs. That's basically is, uh, how easy it is. So if you've got sort of extra large solder, say 0.7, it's really difficult to do these one at a time. You can drag them, but that's quite. A, you've got to be quite good to do the drag soldering method. It's not something I sort of like doing. So anyway, what we do, move on to side two, and then we'll uh, progress round to side four. 
Right, so moving on to side two, again, I'm gonna pre-flux the whole row. So I just apply it with a dipped cable tie. And that protects, it's basically because it's plastic, it's protecting all them joints, not scratching the board. And basically do as before, just one joint at a time. So as long as you've got a fine conical tip, some 0 0.25 solder, it should be a, yeah, good to go to do these one at a time. So we do, just feed it in. Carefully go down the row, one joint at a time. If you catch two joints, it's not a problem. So you might get a short circuit, but it's easily dragged out. Like you say, carefully go down one at a time, feeding it in all the time. That's got them all done down that side. So basically, yeah, that's what we do. Just keep going around the whole IC. So I'll show you side three now. You should end up with a great result. Right, so moving on to side three. Just again, flux the whole row. As you can see, you've got your polarity marker up that top right hand corner of your screen. Sort of up there, that's, that's pin one. So basically make sure at the start of, before you do any soldering, you've got that in the right position. So again, it's just another case of doing it exactly the same. Just carefully go down. So all it is, is just feed it in. So it's quite a simple method. So if you catch two joints, it's not such a bad thing. As long as they don't short together. So all the, you can see all the components down this corner, the ones I protected earlier with the tape. So all these joints, ones I protected underneath this aluminium tape earlier on. So they've all come out really good. So anyway, so that's side three done. Now we just move on to side four. Finally move on to side four. Again, get your external flux added right down the row. And basically, uh, yeah, get sold in one at a time, like I've done on the other three sides. So it's quite a sort of quick process doing it joint by joint. It doesn't take as long as uh, people may you sort of may imagine. Main thing is, say zero point two five solder. That's the, that's the key. So in we go, one at a time. Just try and get see it's got short there, but you can just drag it out. If you catch two joints, it's not a problem. That's how simple it is. Come right down the row. Like I say if you get a short circuit, like I've got sort of about there, basically get your iron on it, just drag it outwards. Just if it won't come, just get a bit of solder break and sort of wick it out. So anyway, that's all four sides done, all the hundred pins. Really quick, basically. So what I do, I clean this up. I'm going to clean it with ultra sold cleaning fluid, but I'll sort of do that off camera. I've showed other videos on how I clean on my boards. So what I do, I clean it up. Like I say, I put a few photos up, and in the description, I'll uh, yeah put a couple of temperatures up that I used, etc. So basically, yeah, if you're doing leaded soldering, I sort of use about 330 degrees Celsius, and for lead free, sort of generally go about 360 to 370 degrees. These may vary, basically, depending if you've got ground planes, etc. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's quite a short one for me, so I'm normally quite a bit longer. But yeah, what I do, I sort of, like I say, I put a few photos up, and I'll see you again soon with uh, yeah, another soldering video. So thanks a lot, and uh, yeah, take care.